This podcast channel is about you, successful international entrepreneurs, successful expats, successful investors, sponsored by ECJ Contacts. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are HEJ.tax and we do these live streams every week. We're actually doing three this week. So we, we love to, to talk to people and hear the concerns and perhaps point them in the right direction. So as we are licensed tax professionals, we have to say that this should not be construed as advice. If it is you walked in here thinking, hey, at the end of this, I'm going to be able to take pen and paper and do my own tax returns. Sorry to disappoint. What, we, what we're going to do is highlight key principles that you need to keep in mind and you need to bring up with your advisor who will know your situation inside out. So again, we're just going to highlight key issues. This is not meant to be advice. You can take it as educational and for some of you, you can take it as entertainment, but this is not advice. You know, we need to stay out of trouble with our licensing and governing boards. So without further ado i turn you over to the hands of the portugal tax expert augusto polino augusto the stage is yours hello everyone thanks thanks for joining maybe i i can just show off myself i'm a tax advisor here in portugal and we uh, we work with both private uh, and corporate uh, uh, clients and um, among our, our clients or private clients we have uh, um, several um, individuals that decide to, to move to Portugal or at least are considering uh, to move to Portugal and um, the idea is that I provide just a, a brief a brief int introduction of the tax regime in Portugal namely with respect to the non-habitual residence regime which is a favorable tax regime for individuals that are uh, considered to move to Portugal and invest in Portugal and uh, maybe I can start with that uh, brief presentation and then we move to the Q&A as Darren, as Darren suggested in the beginning. So maybe I can share my screen, the presentation. So um, I'll try to be uh, brief in terms of the presentation, not taking uh, too long or entering too much detail, but anyway, just uh, uh, I'll try to cover these uh, topics. So uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, tax registration and uh, non-habitual residence application, the main tax ob obligation for, for individuals in Portugal, which, which is the personal income tax annual return. Uh, uh, I'll try to summarize the main features of this regime and, uh, and, 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 and try to uh, summarize the benefits of such regime. So, in terms of the, uh, uh, the tax uh, registration and the, the first uh, uh, remark that, that I would like to, to, to address is the fact that we usually um, think of Portugal uh, as a place where people can decide to live, but also uh, it could be the case that uh, only invest and not become tax resident in Portugal. So I will only address the cases where individuals move to Portugal and intend to spend most of the time here and then became tax resident. Because when we talk about the NHR regime, is a regime applicable to tax residents in Portugal. And this is the first uh, uh, message that I would like to, to, to leave. So people can have, for example, a, a residence permit or a visa and not become tax resident in Portugal, of course. So this, uh, this uh, NHR regime has some conditions. Uh, mainly, uh, the main condition would be, of course, to uh, be the first time or at least was not registered as tax resident in the previous five years in Portugal. So uh, this is one condition. And the other one that... I already mentioned tax resident in Portugal and not elsewhere. And the application for the NHR regime is made until uh, the end of March 
of the year following the one that the, 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 the change of the tax residency occurs. And it is, it is a regime that is applicable for 10 years. So this is um, <clears throat> in terms of the, um, the conditions uh, to, uh, to become tax resident and be considered tax resident in Portugal. The first criteria would be spend more than one entity in any 12 month period. One of the situations where individuals become tax resident. But uh, individuals can also be considered tax resident in Portugal, even in case they spend less than 183 days, but uh, a property, a dwelling in Portugal, in conditions that uh, suggest the intention to, to maintain and occupy uh, such property as habitual residence. In terms of the, the tax uh, uh, registration procedures, in brief terms, uh, um, once you uh, individual become tax resident in Portugal, he needs to report here the worldwide income, so income from Portuguese and foreign source. And the main steps are, uh, of, uh, the first step would be to apply the Portuguese, uh, apply for the Portuguese taxpayer number, which is something that usually occurs the moment that uh, uh, the individual starts the process of getting, for example, a visa or residency permit. Then the moment that he moves to Portugal on a permanent basis to register as tax resident, apply for the NHR status, and then from that moment on, on an annual basis to file uh, uh, the personal income tax return. Uh, the, the, the tax period in Portugal is the calendar here. As I mentioned, uh, uh, individuals need to report the worldwide. And another important aspect that they need to report in bank accounts. So uh, the obligation is to report just the number of the bank accounts, not to report balances or assets held abroad. Uh, just uh, trying to cover some of the main features of the NHR regime. With respect to the passive income, what we call passive income from foreign source, uh, there is uh, exemption available, um, namely in those cases uh, where uh, uh, the, the, the income can be subject to taxation at source under the double tax treaties concluded by Portugal. For example, in case of interest or dividends, these are usually sources of income that are taxable at source and then exempt from personal income tax in Portugal under the NHR regime. The same applies, for example, to rents from properties held uh, abroad. Uh, of course, there are some uh, exceptions and um, to give one, one uh, uh, example of uh, foreign source income that is subject to taxation and not exempt under the NHR regime would be the case uh, of uh, capital gains derived from the sale of uh, securities in general terms and uh, um, also do not benefit from the exemption uh, income sourced in uh, what we call blacklisted jurisdictions. Portugal has a long list of uh, um, jurisdictions that are considered blacklisted and uh, we should pay attention um, in evaluating the, the taxation in case of any income derived from those, those jurisdictions. Um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, with respect to uh, other sources of income, uh, in this case, um, employment income or self-employment income, uh, exemptions under the NHR regime are also available, but in this case, uh, uh, other uh, income, uh, uh, the requirement is to be uh, uh, effectively taxed at source. So uh, effective taxation is required to grant uh, exemption. 
uh, with respect to self-employment income. Uh, the exemption could also apply, but only in case of income derived from the so-called high value added activities. There is a list of activities that are considered high value added for this purpose and only self-employment activities can be uh, uh, exempt. Um, one, one comment with respect to pension income from foreign source, which is currently subject to taxation at a flat rate of 10%. In the past, uh, there was also full exemption from, uh, for pension income from foreign source, which is no longer the case. Um, and and uh, with respect to income from Portuguese source, also let you know that there is also uh, there is also uh, some benefits, namely uh, a percent flat rate applicable to salaries or self-employment income. Again, if such. Uh, income derives from high value added activities. This is the list of high value added activities. I, I will not enter into much detail, but here it is. Uh, so, in, in, in trying to summarize, uh, so this NHR regime is a, a favorable tax regime. Uh, Portugal is a, a whitelisted tax environment, so we get benefits from double tax treaties and so on. Um, we also have uh, some benefits uh, with, resp with respect to uh, the sale of assets um, in some circumstances, for example, real estate assets could be exempt from taxation, capital gains. Uh, uh, there could be also advantages in terms of um, inheritance or gift taxes because we can get exemptions uh, in Portugal uh, if the assets are not located here or if the, uh, mm, the assets are uh, inherited by um, descendants. And then it's still a, a good... Uh, um, tax environment with respect to the retirement income because uh, template, if applicable, is still competitive. So this is more or less the, the main uh, features that I would like to present. And I don't know if Adairon can, can or want to, to have any, uh, some additional comments in this respect. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much for that comprehensive overview, Augusto. So, so if you're a six, seven, or eight-figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor-made solution from a qualified team of professionals, we can help you achieve the international lifestyle, the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life. Please subscribe, like, share and comment below email us at help at htj.tax to engage us to advise on international tax or business matters